Thanks, guys. Um, so today we're just going to look at um, a couple of things. So um, going a quick look at Nostra. The reason we're looking at Nostra is it's a typical IT services company, and we look at the type of progressions that's available inside in an IT services company. Um, I'm going to quickly talk about my own progression in IT, and my own progression is really what, what we're going through today. So I would have started IT, came out of college, got a job role at, at a starter level, and then worked all the, all the way up to hopefully cl close to the top of, of, of where I can get to. Um, there's different levels. One thing around IT is there's loads of opportunity. So there's levels to, if you start a career in IT, you can move sideways to do a different job roles, or you can move up. So if you're deeply technical, you can stay technical. If you want to move into a management role, you can move into a management role. If you want to move into an account manager or a sales role, there's opportunities there. So above any career, um, there is loads of opportunity for progression. Uh, one of the things in terms of uh, our company, there's specialization tracks. So if you want to specialize, and a lot of the people that I would have mentored over the years, they will, they will change as they go. My own career took a, took a change at the start as well. So if you decide now you want to specialize in one thing and you need to change that in a couple of years' time, there's absolutely no issue in IT. Um, and then there's also management tracks. So as we get a little bit older, sometimes management is, is more appealing because we don't want to be doing the deeply technical work. And in order to progress our salaries, we either have to keep progressing up the engineering level, learning more, or we can decide to be a manager. And some people are very suited to be to, to being managers and other, other people aren't. Um, I've worked with loads of engineers, uh, some that have gone into the management side, some that have gone into the sales side, and some who's just turned around and said, I love being an engineer, that's all I want to do. Um, and they're happy at the salary band that, that they're on. Everything in IT typically has a salary band. So if you start off on a IT support role, that'll have an entry and top level of salary band. If you want to, depending on what's important to you, and I've worked with people who spent 20 years in an IT support role and they're still very happy in it. It does cap what they can get on salary, but they're not worried about their salary. They're happy with their salary, they're happy with the job. So everyone is a little bit different. Um, and it's the same on the management tracks, there's different stuff. Uh, we're going to look at Nostra. So Nostra was a relatively new, new company. Um, I think it's less than 20 years old. It has office, main office in Dublin and Park West. It is an office here in Galway, moving into a newer office in Ballybrit uh, in April. And we've also an office in Cork. At the moment, we have 220 employees. And we're adding about 15 to 20 employees a month for the last six months. So we're adding and we're growing we're an outsourced IT provider, so we work with over 300 companies headquartered out of Ireland. Some of those, uh, maybe a couple of hundred, some a couple of thousand, and some only 10 or 15 users. We outsource, they outsource their IT to us. So that's a growing trend, and that's why we're, we have accelerated growth. So a lot of organizations are looking at IT. Because IT is now so specialized, you can't hire one person for it. So we need specialisations, and any organisation needs an element of IT support, enough to keep the lights on, keep everybody working, but they also need application specialists, and then they need cybersecurity specialists. So there's different roles there, and it's very hard for a small organisation to get those internally, because if they do, they also have to hire an IT manager. So that has led to quite accelerated growth in Nostra, and that's going to continue. So we're going to need a lot more people, and we need them at all the different levels. Um, we have employees working across 20 to 25 countries around the world. So if you're working with Nostra, you can work out of Galway, Dublin, Cork. Um, we have a hybrid working model. Most people work some days in the office, some days at home, but we also have people that are completely remote working, and they typically would have worked out of one of the offices for a couple of years before making a decision to move to Spain, Portugal, Brazil, America, uh, Philippines, uh, Bulgaria. We have lots of people working out of different, and South Africa. Um, we have customers around the world. 
The unique thing is that they're all HQ'd out of Ireland. So they make their decisions in Ireland and then they'll have sub offices out, outside, the world, out, outside of Ireland. Um, taking you through my own progression, which would be typical enough for IT engineers' uh, pro progression. So if we, I graduated in UIG in 1998. I took a job as a software developer um, in telecom air and software. Um, I stayed there for one year. I didn't particularly like software development. Um, in fact, I didn't like all the documentation that went with development. So I went, wanted to go in to be a software developer. When I got into software development, I spent 80% 80, 80 of my time doing documentation, writing test cases, spent a lot more time doing documentation than I did development. Um, I decided to see an opportunity to become an IT support role, so I took that role. Inside in that role, then, I moved up from IT support level the different levels. It was completely different back in 2000, 1999, 2000. As an IT support engineer, I was out in a van. I was given training, you were given a van, and you were sent from site to site. Now, in terms of IT support for the first couple of levels, it's in the office, it's working remotely, the tools are completely different. But the progression plans really haven't changed. So, IT support engineers typically go through a couple of different levels, and they're all learning levels. And then you become an IT infrastructure support engineer, which is servers, cloud, firewalls. So you're allowed to do deployments and a little bit more technical work. On each stage of those, so if you move from a level one to a level two to a level three, it's more advanced. The salary rises. And one thing about IT, if you want to push it hard and you want to move towards those levels quickly, that's totally up to you. So your career in IT, in a progressive IT company, is totally up to you. So it, it may be different if you're in an internal IT role, but any IT services company, you can move through, through those roles pretty quick as long as you have the cap capacity to, to actually do the job. You have the certifications, so you will always be getting certified. So one of the things in IT is that you never stop learning. So as soon as you finish one certification, you're probably on to the next. So if you're in a level one support role, there's a list of certifications. If you want to move to level two, you need to start working towards, uh, towards those and also have the competency and have the ability to do everything that's on, required of a level two. But it's very straightforward and it's all set out. And then into level three. Once you're a level three engineer, that's when things begin to open up a little bit more. Um, there's project engineers out doing installations and there's different levels in project engineers as well. So if we look at IT support engineers on three levels, there's kind of three levels of project engineers. And that's as far as you can get then, and you have to decide, decide a specialization. So if you become a project engineer in infrastructure, it is broad. So you have to start deciding if you're going to specialize. And there is a lot of specializations, and I'll go through those in a few minutes. Uh, there's also a management track. If you get to you, your support, every support desk has a team lead, and it has a service desk manager. So there's different managers across the whole business. So if you're working in engineering and you decide, actually, I prefer doing people management, then there's the opportunity to do people management. So you don't have to, if you don't like, if you, if you prefer working and mentoring people, and that's your, what, what lights you up, then that's, there's opportunities for that as well. And we're all different, and we change as we go through our careers as well. So a lot of people that start off as engineers may end up on a management track, and there's different levels of manager. We also have management managers and senior managers, departmental managers. Um, some of the specializations then include cybersecurity. So there is specializations around networking, specializations around cybersecurity. Um, in my own career, I, I've moved all the way through project engineers into a manager. I became a cybersecurity specialist, and now I'm a security and compliance lead for that, for that team in Nostra. So there is different levels. I could have chosen different paths. Um, could have chosen networking, could have chosen infrastructure, but I chose cybersecurity and that has w worked well for, for, for me so far. These are the support roles. We'll call them level one to level three. Different organization calls them type, types different levels. A level one is a help desk role. Typically it's doing, it's fairly straightforward technical. So if you join an IT services company and even if you're coming out of college, or you're going back into a change of career, typically you're going to be brought in as a level one 
IT technician. And that's going to involve a lot of training and it's going to involve fairly junior tasks. So you're going to be resetting passwords. You might be moving people through groups. You have different tasks on firewalls, but they're fairly low impact tasks. They're high impact to the end user, but on the, on the back end, you can't cause a lot of damage. You can't make change too much. It's fairly regulated what you can actually change. There are level one and level two in particular are learning and growth roles. You're getting a broad view of all infrastructure, whether it's firewalls, switching, cloud, desktops, servers. There's a lot in there, and you're getting to look at all of that. By the time you become a level three, you're actually beginning to be um, resolving an awful lot more issues. So you, you're fairly well qualified at that stage. So as you move from level one to level three, there's significant increases in salary as well. Those roles typically may take about two years to move through, but you can be quicker or you can be slower. I've seen people sit at level one for one year and five years. Level one typically is a one to two year. Level two, maybe another one to two years. Level three, another one to two years. But you can easily be ready to progress into a specialization role in IT within five years. And there will be three significant increases in salary in, in that. So it's totally back to yourselves or back to the people that's trying to do it. It's all about training, it's about commitment, and it's about learning. If you can decide on a specialization early, then it's much easier from an IT career. So if you're going to choose that you want to be a manager after going through, you need the background of the level one, level two, level three, so you have a good view of all the technology, and then you can interact. You've seen an awful lot of technology. Technology changes all the time, but if you did your level, you progress through those levels even 10 years ago, it's very easy to, to actually catch up on the technology. At that point, you need to be making a decision. Do I want to be a people manager? Do I want to move to the next? Do I want to step up the ladder as a people manager? Do I want to, make, to be a specialization? Specializations can also include project management. So it doesn't have to be totally technical. You can decide if, you, if you're good at managing people and you like managing projects and you want to stay relatively technical, you can take a track around project management. You can take a specialization of networking. Networking is hugely important. This involves networks, firewalls, lots of technical installations, lots of technical support. As we move to cloud, networking, hugely important. So the big change for the last couple of years and for the next couple of years is not a lot of infrastructure on-premise moving away from servers being installed in, on customer sites, everything moving to cloud. Cloud is in Microsoft, it's in uh, Amazon, and there's different levels of cloud. But networking is hugely important. Um, server infrastructure will always be there, whether it's moving to, towards cloud, and it's predominantly will be cloud going forward, but there's, whether, whether it's on cloud or on-premise, still needs to be set up, still needs to support it. So there's a whole infrastructure support there as well. Then there's cybersecurity. It's growing fast, and it's going to be there for the next long time. So that's a specialization in itself. If you can decide early during your level, well, by the time you get to level three, you can actually start doing specialization exams. You can start looking at your prints or PMI exams for project management. You can start looking at your exams for your server infrastructure. Microsoft have lots of technical exams, whether it's for networking. Networking is Cisco, it's SonicWall, there's different vendors, HP, there's exams and training available there. So the quicker you decide on a specialization, the better. You can always change your mind. If you do cybersecurity for a year or two, you can go back and do networking and vice versa. Um, as the, our company, Nostra, we have all these specializations, so that's why we have them up. But it's pretty much the same in software development. If you choose a software development uh, progression as a career, you go into a company, there's different levels to go up there. Um, cybersecurity, there's industry exams for that as well. So we use CEH, which is Certified Ethical Hacker. We use the CISSP. They're all industry exams. But you're building yourself and you're building your own uh, value at the same time. You're doing lots of Microsoft exams. You're doing lots of specialization exams, whether it's project management, networking, cybersecurity, and then we've also a business application section in productivity. And that's all about making more use of cloud services in terms of SharePoint, Teams, all that type of stuff, and putting business apps into that. So there's quite a lot in there. So in terms of career progression, as we see it, it's been coming in at the start into level one. You may not join in on that track. If you have 
specific specialisations before you come in, you might join in a senior project engineer or you might join in a, in a different. But we like to see people coming in at, different, at the beginning and bring them up. But you can join in, and come in at any stage of those. And each of those, as you move from level three to a specialisation, that's another jump in salary along with progressions. Inside in cyber security, there's multiple levels there as well. So there's, no matter where you go in IT, it's a series of multiple levels. And as you pass those levels, which is continued recertification, doing, pro proven to be able to do the job, you can keep moving up in terms of uh, job roles and salary. So as I said earlier on, different people will actually get to a stage where, the fu where they'll love the role they're in, and they might stay there for a lot longer than what they would, would have planned to stay as well. Uh, on the other side, we have account management. So, and I've worked with people and continue to work with people at stages of their career, they'll actually decide they don't want to be technical anymore, that they actually like dealing with the customer. So you can spend, and some of our engineers have spent 10 years being technical and have decided to move into account manager role. So they become technical advisors, technical account managers, and sometimes pre-sales. So they'll go into a customer, they'll advise them what they should have from a technical point of view, and they'll work and make sure that they're, they don't do the installations anymore. Um, sometimes they may not even do the advice anymore, but they'll make sure the solution is put in for the customer and the customer is happy. And at the back of that, then, we have sales administrators. So if they, if, and we have people that will come into the business just as been on the administrative side, and they become sales administrators or different levels of administrators across, across the business. Uh, account management as well is a little bit different. So it's based on salary plus commission, where an engineer is based on the, on the different levels. But in terms of account management, there's also sales leaders as well. Um, in terms of management, if we decide we got to a level three, or we, got, we could change track at any time. So if we're an engineer that has done 10 years or 15 years or even 20 years on the technical side, and they, they want to be people managers, and not everybody makes a good people manager. So some people will actually stay as engineers all their life, and that's what they want to do. They, don't want to be, they want to be managed themselves, but they don't want to manage other people. Um, there's a joke in IT that says, if you want to break a good engineer, you make him a manager. So, and that, and that's, that's, that's how you break a good engineer in IT, typically. So you give them a management role, and they're totally, it's totally different. So we have, and we'll always have people who just want to be good engineers, get to the top of their specialization, and maybe move specializations and stay there. Um, and never want to be on the management side. Um, so on the management side, for each service desk we have, and there's multiple service desks, so Nostra as a company supports 350 customers, and that's broken down into multiple service desks, and there's multiple service desk managers. So as a level three engineer, you can make a move into being a service desk manager. You can become a technical team leader. You can become a project manager, department leads, and also senior department managers. So there is progression into the management side. So there's probably a level where you get to on your specialization, and then your salary may be capped at that level. So if one thing, when you stop learning and you stop specializing in IT, you probably will hit a salary ceiling. But there is plenty of opportunity then to move to the management side and actually change, change your tact on that side as well. Um, so that's all the slides I have for you guys. I was hoping to take on some questions as well. Is there anything in there that you might have questions about? Perfect. Any questions? Gary. Gary, is it easy to, say, transfer from another, um, any other industry into IT, or is it something you think you have to have a, a natural knack for? It's easy to transfer. So we have... On our, one of our senior engineers, I'll go to some of our most senior engineers. One was a butcher, one was an electrician. Actually, two of them were electricians. So there is, you don't have to start off a career in IT. Some of the people that we see that are really, really good um, engineers are people that might have had a customer service background as well. So they would have been dealing with customers. The, the electrician would have had a more technical background but the butcher would have dealt with people on a daily basis. They went back and they retrained. So anybody can retrain. One of the things with IT, there's loads of training. There's online training. There's loads of 
uh, degree courses online, degree courses at night, at the weekends. It's probably one of the only careers where you can actually get more training than you can actually take. So, with it, And then if you want to do a specialisation, there's loads of training available to you as well. So there is tons of training, and it's kind of, if you're motivated, and I know people have different stages in life as well. So you go through a stage in life where you're learning a lot, then you might say, okay, the kids come along, everything is busy, you might, you might stick in a particular job function for more than what you had planned because everything outside the job was busier. But then you'll go back into it again and move up a couple of levels. But there's lots of people that actually change. And we've had some of the conversations we've had at the stand today was people looking to change. They might have said, I've been an engineer, not an IT engineer for the last 10 years. Now I'm looking to change. And we bring in people at that level because we can retrain them. We're working with programs with some of the colleges in order to be put people through a specific IT certification that's for the managed services business that we do or outsourced IT business that we do. So there's absolutely, it's good, change is good, so it's no harm to change your career. Very true, very true. Now when it also comes to, say, retraining, are we looking at, you know, years to qualify at the very end or? No, it's typically done in, in stages, so you can get a certificate within a year. You can, you can move, you can do a diploma, you can do a d- degree. I went back during COVID, I did a master's in the evenings over two years. So it's, it's not, there's loads of content there, whatever you want to do. And there's industry certification as well. So one of, one of the things with the IT industry is we have partners we work with, the likes of Microsoft, the likes of SonicWall, the likes of HP. They all have industry certification. They're, those courses are, can be like two or three days long, plus a significant certification that might take you a couple of weeks to do. So you can layer your CV in industry certification as well. It doesn't have to be academic. So it's probably one of the areas where we don't have to be totally focused on academia. So if you come out, and we're looking at bringing people straight from secondary school. So you see, and I know some of the bigger technology companies in Ireland have actually a track now where they're taking people straight from secondary school into the technology companies and they're bypassing the, the academic route. And that's because there's so much training available to them outside it as well. So you don't have to, you, you can come straight in and you can do as much or as little that you have the time to do. Now here's more of an intrusive question, but starting salary, what are we looking at? What are we talking Our about? Our starting salary at the moment is 32k. Fantastic, so, fantastic. Yeah, and that's for our, our basic, that's bringing people, we bring in on a graduate programme and bring in people from, from, there, from there up. Lovely stuff. Thank you so much, Gary. Any questions from anybody else? Or if you're feeling a little bit shy, Gary, you will be at the Nostra stand and I will be, yeah. exactly till four o'clock. Thank you so much. Perfect. Thank you, guys.